Q1. What is the use of protected meal time? Patient get protection from visitors. Staff get enough time to have their bank. To give personal hygiene to patients who are confused. Patients get enough time to eat food without distractions while staff focus on people who need help with eating. Q2. A nurse is not allowing the client to go to bed without finishing her meal. What is your action as a RN? Do nothing as client has to finish her meal which is important for her health. Challenge the situation immediately as this is related to dignity of the patient and raise your concern. Do nothing as patient is not under your care. Wait until the situation is over and speak to the client on what she wants to do. Q3. A patient is to be subjected for surgery but the patient's BMI is low. Where will you refer the patient? Speech and language therapist. Dietitian. Chef. Family member. Q4. When using nasal cannulae, the maximum oxygen flow rate that should be used is 6 liters minute. Why? Nasal cannulae are only capable of delivering an inspired oxygen concentration between 24% and 40%. For any given flow rate, the inspired oxygen concentration will vary between breaths as it depends upon the rate and depth of the patient's breath and the inspiratory flow rate. Higher rates can cause nasal mucosal drying and may lead to epistaxis. If oxygen is administered at greater than 40% it should be humidified. You cannot humidify oxygen via nasal cannulae. Q5. Respiratory protective equipment include Gloves, mask, apron, paper towels. Q6. A patient underwent an abdominal surgery and will be unable to meet nutritional needs through oral intake. A patient was placed on enteral feeding. How would you position the patient when feeding is being administered? Sitting upright at 30 to 45 degrees. Sitting upright at 60 to 75 degrees. Sitting upright at 45 to 60. Sitting upright at 75 to 90 degrees. Q7. A client breathes shallowly and looks upward when listening to the nurse. Which sensory mode should the nurse plan to use with this client? Touch. Auditory. Kinesthetic. Visual. Q8. What percentage of the air we breath is made up of oxygen? 16 21%, 26%, 31%. Q9. Which of the following is not a cause of type 1, hypoxemic, respiratory failure? Asthma. Pulmonary edema. Drug overdose. Granulomatous lung disease. Q10. What should be included in your initial assessment of your patient's respiratory status? Review the patient's notes and charts to obtain the patient's history. Review the results of routine investigations. Observe the patient's breathing for ease and comfort, rate and pattern. Perform a systematic examination and ask the relatives for the patient's history. Q11. Which of the following indicates signs of severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPT? High P02 and high PC02. Low P02 and low PC02. Low P02 and high PC02. High P02 and low PC02. Q12. 
patient is in for oxygen therapy a prescription is required including route, method, and how long. No prescription is required unless he will use it at home. Prescription not required for oxygen therapy. Q13. Mr. James, 72 years old, is a registered blind admitted on your ward due to dehydration. He is encouraged to drink and eat to recover. How will you best manage this plan of care? Ask the patient the assistance he needs. Delegate someone to feed him. Ask the relatives to assist in feeding him. Look for volunteer to assist with his needs. Q14. Signs and symptoms of early fluid volume deficit, except. Decreased urine output. Decreased pulse rate. Concentrated urine. Decreased skin turgor. Q15. A nurse is preparing to deliver a food tray to a client whose religion is Jewish. The nurse checks the food on the tray and notes that the food on the tray and notes that the client has received a roast beef dinner with whole milk as a beverage. Which action will the nurse take? Deliver the food tray to the client. Call the dietary department and ask for a new meal tray. Replace the whole milk with fat-free milk. Ask the dietary department to replace the roast beef with pork. Q16. What is positive fluid balance? A deficit in fluid volume. A state when fluid intake is greater than output. Retention of both electrolytes and water in proportion to the levels in the extracellular fluid. A state where the body has less water than it needs to function properly. Q17. Which of the following oxygen masks is able to deliver between 60 to 90% of oxygen when delivered at a flow rate of 10 to 15 liters per minute? Simple semi-rigid plastic masks. Nasal cannulas. Venture high flow mask. Non-rebreathing masks. Q18. A patient had been suffering from severe diarrhea and is now showing signs of dehydration. Which of the following is not a classic symptom? Passing small amounts of urine frequently. Dizziness or lightheadedness. Dark colored urine. Thirst. Q19. If your patient is having positive balance. How will you find out dehydration is balanced? Input exceeds output. Output exceeds input. Optimally hydrated. Optimally dehydrated. Q20. What do you need to consider when helping a patient with shortness of breath sit out in a chair? They should not sit out on a chair. Lying flat is the only position for someone with shortness of breath so that there are no negative effects of gravity putting pressure in lungs. Sitting in a reclining position with legs elevated to reduce the use of postural muscle oxygen requirements, increasing lung volumes and optimizing perfusion for the best VQ ratio. The patient should also be kept in an environment that is quiet so they don't expend any unnecessary energy. The patient needs to be able to sit in a forward leaning position supported by pillows. They may also need access to a nebulizer and humidified oxygen so they must be in a position where this is accessible without being a risk to others. There are two possible positions either sitting upright or side-lying, which is used and is determined by the age of the patient. It is also important to remember that they will always need a nebulizer and oxygen and the air temperature must be below 20 degrees Celsius. Q21. Concentration of electrolytes within the body vary depending on the compartment within which they are contained. Extracellular fluid has a high concentration of which of the following? 
potassium, chloride, sodium, magnesium. Q22. You are caring for a patient with a history of coat who is requiring 70% humidified oxygen via a face mask. You are monitoring his response to therapy by observing his color, degree of respiratory distress and respiratory rate. The patient's oxygen saturations have been between 95% and 98%. In addition, the doctor has been taking arterial blood gases. What is the reason for this? Oximeters may be unreliable under certain circumstances, e.g. if tissue perfusion is poor, if the environment is cold and if the patient's nails are covered with nail polish. Arterial blood gases should be sampled if the patient is receiving greater than 60% oxygen. Pulse oximeters provide excellent evidence of oxygenation, but they do not measure the adequacy of ventilation. Arterial blood gases measure both oxygen and carbon dioxide levels and therefore give an indication of both ventilation and oxygenation. Q23. A relative of the patient was experiencing vomiting and diarrhea and wished to visit her mother who was admitted. As a nurse, what will you advise to the patient's relative? There should be 48 hours after active symptoms should disappear prior to visiting patient. Inform relative it is fine to visit mother as long as she uses alcohol before entering ward premises. Q24. Signs of denture-related stomatitis include all except redness underneath the area where the dentures are placed, red sores at the corners of lips or on the roof of the mouth, presence of white patches inside the mouth, gingivitis. Q25. What is respiration? The movement of air into and out of the lungs to continually refresh the gases there, commonly called breathing. Movement of oxygen from the lungs into the blood, and carbon dioxide from the lungs into the blood, commonly called gaseous exchange. Movement of oxygen from blood to the cells, and of carbon dioxide from the cells to the blood. The transport of oxygen from the outside air to the cells within tissues, and the transport of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. Q26. What should be included in a prescription for oxygen therapy? You don't need a prescription for oxygen unless in an emergency. The date it should commence, the doctor's signature and bleep number. The type of oxygen delivery system, inspired oxygen percentage and duration of the therapy. You only need a prescription if the patient is going to have home oxygen. Q27. If a patient is prescribed nebulizers, what is the minimum flow rate in liters per minute required? 2 to 4. 4 to 6. 6 to 8. 8-10. Q28. What do you expect to manifest with fluid volume deficit? Low pulse, low BP. High pulse, high BP. High pulse, low BP. Low pulse, high BP. Q29. While assisting a client from bed to chair, the nurse observes that the client looks pale and is beginning to perspire heavily. The nurse would then do which of the following activities as a reassessment? Help client into the chair, but more quickly. Document client's vital signs taken just prior to moving the client. Help client back to bed immediately. Observe client's skin color and take another set of vital signs. Q30. If a patient is experiencing dysphagia, which of the following investigations are they likely to have? Colonoscopy. 
gastroscopy, cystoscopy, arthroscopy. Q31, causes of gingival bleeding poor removal plaque, poor flossing, poor nutrition, poor taking of drugs. Q32, joy, a copped patient is to be discharged in the community. As her nurse, which of the following interventions will you encourage him to do to prevent progression of disease? Oxygen therapy. Breathing exercise. Cessation of smoking. Coughing exercise. Q33. Position to make breathing effective. Left lateral. Supine. Right lateral. High side leaning. Q34. Nurse carrying a confused client not taking fluids. Staff on previous shift tried to make him drink, but were unsuccessful. Now it is the visitor's time. Wife is waiting outside what to do. Ask the wife to give him fluid, and inquire about his fluid preferences and usual drinking time. Tell her to wait and you need some time to make him drink. Inform doctor to start four fluids to prevent dehydration. Q35. How many cups of fluid do we need every day to keep us well hydrated? 1 to 2. 2 to 4. 4 to 6. 6 to 8. Q36. In normal breathing, what is the main muscles involved in inspiration? The diaphragm. The lungs. The intercostal. All of the above. Q37. The human body is made up of approximately what proportion of water? 50%. 60%. 70%. 80%. Q38. A copped patient is about to be discharged from the hospital. What is the best health teaching to provide this patient? Increase fluid intake. Do not use home oxygen. Quit smoking. Nebulize as needed. Q39. Which of the following is not normally considered to be a high-risk fluid? Cerebrospinal fluid. Urine. Peritoneal fluid. Semen. All of the above. Q40. A patient is admitted to the ward with symptoms of acute diarrhea. What should your initial management be? Assessment, protective isolation, universal precautions. Assessment, source isolation, antibiotic therapy. Assessment, protective isolation, antimotility medication. Assessment, source isolation, Universal precautions. Q41. The client reports nausea and constipation. Which of the following would be the priority nursing action? Collect a stool sample. Complete an abdominal assessment. Administer an anti-nausea medication. Notify the physician. Q42. Why is it essential to humidify oxygen used during respiratory therapy? Oxygen is a very hot gas so if humidification ISNT used, the oxygen will burn the respiratory tract and cause considerable pain for the patient when they breathe. Oxygen is a dry gas which can cause evaporation of water from the respiratory tract and lead to thickened mucus in the airways reduction of the movement of cilia and increased susceptibility to respiratory infection. Humidification cleans the oxygen as it is administered to ensure it is free from any aerobic pathogens before it is inhaled by the patient. Q43. Dehydration is of particular concern in ill health. 
If a patient is receiving for fluid replacement and is having their fluid balance recorded, which of the following statements is true of someone said to be in positive fluid balance? The fluid input has exceeded the output. The fluid balance chart can be stopped as positive means good. The doctor may consider increasing the four drip rate. The fluid output has exceeded the input. Q44, a patient under you developed shortness of breath while climbing stairs. You inform this to the doctor. This response is interpreted as breaching of patient's confidentiality. Essential, as it is the matter of patient's health. Q45, as a nurse, what health teachings will you give to a copped patient? Encourage to stop smoking. Administer oxygen inhalation as prescribed. Enroll in a pulmonary rehabilitation program. All the above. Q46. What is the most accurate method of calculating a respiratory rate? Counting the number of respiratory cycles in 15 seconds and multiplying by 4. Counting the number of respiratory cycles in one minute. One cycle is equal to the complete rise and fall of the patient's chest. Not telling the patient as this may make them conscious of their breathing pattern and influence the accuracy of the rate. Placing your hand on the patient's chest and counting the number of respiratory cycles in 30 seconds and multiplying by 2. Q47. What do you expect patients with COP to manifest? Ink PCO2. December 2nd. December PCO2. Ink O2. Ink PCO2. Ink O2. December PCO2. December O2. Q48. A copped patient is in home care. When you visit the patient, he is dyspneic, anxious, and frightened. He is already on too lit oxygen with nasal cannula. What will be your action? Call the emergency service. Give Oromorph 5 mg medications as prescribed. Ask the patient to calm down. Increase the flow of oxygen to 5L. Q49. What should be included in your initial assessment of your patient's respiratory status? Review the patient's notes and charts to obtain the patient's history. Review the results of routine investigations. Observe the patient's breathing for ease and comfort, rate and pattern. Check for any drains. All of the above. Please don't forget like and subscribe. Q50. Prior to sending a patient home on oxygen, healthcare providers must ensure the patient and family understand the dangers of smoking in an oxygen-rich environment. Why is this necessary? It is especially dangerous to the patient's health to smoke while using oxygen. Oxygen is highly flammable and there is a risk of fire. Oxygen and cigarette smoke can combine to produce a poisonous mixture. Oxygen can lead to an increased consumption of cigarette.